All right, let's talk to Themis and do the quest for P4 in. Who watches the warders? Themis would offer what comfort he can to Eric. Much as I am to lo loathe to disturb Eric so soon after what has just occurred, I am afraid circumstances do not afford us the luxury of time. Perhaps it will do him well to speak with about recent events, concerning both the keyword and his father. Okay, where's Eric? There he is. The creation of the ward which surrounds Pandemonium was an outstanding feat of magical prowess, a feat accomplished by none other than La Habrea. That both my father and I can bind others in chains is perhaps the only thing that we have in common. Ah, so it is true. I, I'm La Habrea's son. Bereft of his talent for magics, or his brilliant mind, but his son nonetheless. Surely, this doesn't come entirely as a surprise to you. Nay, I had an inkling when you said you had practiced ethereal shackles since childhood. Assuming you hadn't been employed here quite that long, it had to indicate some long-held connection with La Habrea. It was the Habrea that ta taught me how to cast ethereal shackles, but that was it. My further education was overseen by the words of the Habrea. More specifically, my mother, who was researcher here. Interesting. You did speak of Athena, a chief keyboarder, before La Habrea. She is your mother, yes? How astute. I can see now why they chose you to lead this investigation. You've the right of it. Athena was my mother, and it was she who invited me to join her here. The Habrea had nothing to do with it. I see there was little love lost between you two. What I cannot see is why La Habrea was appointed chief keyboard when another was already in place. was in place. My mother is no longer with us. I don't think that's true. And La Habrea was all too eager to assume her responsibilities, with nary a moment spared to mourn her. What love do I owe him now, when he offered not one drop of compassion then? Ah, I see. She is no longer with us. An expression to convey the end of life. I have known only the public face of La Habrea, while he is lauded for his ability to maintain composure in the face of unnerving circumstances. No, that doesn't sound like the La Habrea we know. I must admit that oft he comes across as cold. Apologies, but we can can we speak about something else? This topic isn't an easy one for me to discuss. Of course, there is more pressing matters at hand, after all. Namely, how to deal with his sparrows. We have yet to see the other warder orders. Judging by what we know, we can surmise that Hesperos has confined them somewhere beyond our grasp. And now that he is aware of our presence, he will be preparing for our next encounter. We cannot expect to face him on equal footing, quite the opposite in fact. Every moment we spend chasing after the creations is another moment Hesperos can contrive another advantage for himself. The wisest course would be to find him first and foremost. Sounds good to me. He 
said that he has become one with the creations. Perhaps that means he is vulnerable to internment. Ooh, that's an interesting thought. In theory, that should be possible. However, is it enough merely to confine him? After all he has done? I need to know why. I need to know what drove him to forsake everything he has worked for. Was it all truly so that he could serve his master? To my mind, he's merely put La Habrea's own work at risk in trade for some Nibia's power. La Habrea is the chief keyword of Pandemonium. How would throwing it into disarray win his favor? It doesn't make sense. I share your curiosity, but we must consider that our enemy has us at a disadvantage in every sense. What do you think? Should we seek to put him in fetters? Or would it be too dangerous to allow him to court him quarter? We gotta go take him down. I want answers too. If you fail to confine him, I can always strike him down. Yeah, I want answers too. Sure. Daring as ever, I see. I know not which trials you have faced in your past, but to see you so certain is all the convincing I need. Very well. Let us try Eric's plan. Thank you, Brillian. I believe I can shed some light on the nature of our foe. When his sparrow spoke with us, I noticed he bore the telltale fangs of the vampire. I'm just going to read that as vampire. A beast which feeds off the aether of its prey. Likely, that is the creation Hesperus merged his essence with. And we know all too well that he can change the environment around himself at will. The battle will not be an easy one, but I believe in our victory. I do too, because I'm here. Espadellus, the fourth circle, now accessible. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to Eric and Themis again, and then we'll see if we can get some people to join us. That Hesperos possessed such a lust for power that he would resort to this. Clearly I misjudged him. I'd like nothing more than to strike him down myself, but seeing you wipe that arrogant grim off his face will taste just as sweet. He called himself a Hemitheus and claimed immortality. I know not what, how he discovered this dark art, but this actions do not bespeak a sound mind. All right, let's go ahead and I'll say something in chat again. Now we get to fight Vampire Daddy. And then we got some revelations about uh, Eric and uh, La Habrea. Although the La Habrea that they're describing does not sound like the La Habrea we knew in ARR. Calm and collected? There we go, that was really quick. I guess people like Vampire Daddy. Anyway, let's get started with Asphodelus, the fourth circle. Oh yeah, well, maybe not the glowy eyes, but 
Hemitheus Hesperus. Spoopy music. Come on, Gunbreaker. Oh, I ended up doing more damage and getting aggro. Okay, so what are we supposed to do with this? Looks like everyone's running around over here. Is it gonna rotate? Oh, okay, that's how it works. Okay, so he's setting the stage, like he said. So what's Pinax gonna do? Okay, so this is water. Okay, it's gonna knock us back. Okay. Surprised no one died there. Then we got three of them. Then we got another water one, I see. I forget what this one was. I think that was just a... So the water's gonna blow us back. So let's not get knocked back. Let's not be too far. Or I need to be a... Uh... Yeah, that's gonna knock us back. And then, I don't know what Hell's Skewer does. Oh, no, right, that's Hell's Skewer. Okay, that's what that one is. And then this one was just a... Uh, distance ones, we had to get to the corner. Okay, this is interesting. Just gotta memorize some pretty simple mechanics. Okay, Blood Drake is. Blood Rake is just uh, healing and damage and raid wide. Okay, so no tanks there. I believe I've seen this uh, this bun before. In that um, easterly shift. Ah, okay. I get it. Same thing. This one is a uh, shroud, though. Ah. Oh, somehow I like, didn't get hit off. I don't understand that. Southern lead ship. Okay, yeah, this one's gonna be blowing us away again. Yeah. 
All right, we got a red mage. I'm like, oh, those healers are dead. Looks like we're looks like we're done. How did these work? Like that? Okay. No tanks. Okay. Let me hit this one. Okay, that was pretty easy. Just gotta memorize, uh, memorize the different attacks. Not like it's, uh, the last Eden raid, that Utopia. That one was a lot trickier. Pandemonium Asphodelus complete. I don't have that, obviously. <laughs> Both the healers died. Nice, got some pieces. Alright, let's get out of here. Now, Themis, we end this here. Fools, I will not be put in chains. Think that I would fall before one such as you. Perhaps I should have treated you as more than a mere nuisance. Despite your victory, you shall never have the knowledge you seek. The secrets of my transformation, the secrets of my deception, they shall return to the star with me. You are wasting your breath, Hesperos. We have the upper hand now. Surely you can see that. Yes, yes. My repertoire is not exhausted yet, however. Although I have failed, my end shall be on my own terms. Are we going to get another rated T14 moment? I remain loyal to my very last. Come what may, I die with dignity. How did your ambition lead you so astray, Hesperos? You are better than that. Your star shone more brightly than any other in Pandemonium. You had Lahabre's respect, his trust. What more did you seek? That would forsake all that and sully your legacy besides. He became so blinded by his own desires that he lost sight of his duty. In the end, he lost everything, and his plans lie in tatters. I fail to see any dignity in that. Even so, I would have liked to know why he chose this path. Hesperos's infatuation with your father was his undoing. Perhaps he was so jealous that the fate had chosen you, and not him, to be Lahabrea's son. So terrible did this jealousy become that he sought 
Verboten power. Power that La Habrea would be unable to ignore. How does a pursuit for respect warp one's heart so? How does infatuation with one person turn into contempt for everyone else? I've never heard of such a thing. It's not uncommon as you might think. It happens, but that doesn't mean it's right. I see. I admit, I cannot but find it vexing. But perhaps that signifies not by my own capacity for bitterness. I do understand what it is to have a beacon to follow in dark times. A person you trust to guide you true. How it is so desperate, desperately wish their light would fall upon you again. But we haven't spent enough time assuming the intentions of the departed. There are the likely living to consider. We must find the other warders and round up the remaining creations forthwith. Of that, at least, we can be certain. I believe I can be of help in that matter. The influence of Hesperus's magic is fading throughout Asphodelus. Now is the perfect opportunity to seize control of the facility and restore things to their original state. Seize control? Can you really do that? What? What is this presence? Eric, what lies beyond that threshold? That's the passage which connects Asphodelus to Abyssus. Why? Be on your guard, you two. Now that Asphodelus is free of its obstructions, I can more easily sense the disturbances in the lower levels. Something stirs in Abyssus. Well, that sounds like fun. A nice, perfect place to end off. Right? A warding sigil? How? Let us return to the gates for now. I should like to apprise the situation from there. Needless to say, our investigation is far from over. Just when I had thought our work to be done, did this tragic D unfold all throughout Pandemonium? Although we have defeated Hesperus, it appears we have but scratched the surface of Pandemonium's troubles. My head is still swimming with questions. But could this mean Hesperus wasn't actually behind this? It's a stark possibility, yes. The root of this crisis may lie somewhere much deeper than even Abyssos. When we first encountered you, you said the memories of your escape were vague, that your senses were muddled. I believe this was more than the result of a panicked mind. You were made to feel this way by a powerful magical influence. It is possible that the same magic could have poisoned Asperus' heart, twisting his affection for La Habrea into a burning obsession. Then, in this altered state, it was made an offer of power he could not refuse. Wait, are you suggesting that someone else turned Hesperus into that thing? If so, it stands to reason that they wouldn't stop at him. Indeed, our mysterious mastermind does not lack for subjects for his experiments. For more potential 
Let me see why. That's not good. If what you're saying is true, then my colleagues are doomed to share the same fate as the sparrows. Do not lose heart yet, Eric. The sparrows challenged us alone, and that tells me that the process of this creation was long and taxing one. If he was the first Hemitheus, then the rest of the warders are likely still alive. However, much as I would like to hasten deeper into Pandemonium, the patch requires that we wait till 6.2. I mean, that's not what he says. We must focus our efforts on finding a way through. With all creation still feeling f having free reign of Asphodelus, that won't be easy. On the contrary, I yet retain control of these circles, and thus can wield interment magics within the, their walls at will. The creatures will pose no threat to us. Well, that's useful. Just like that, then nothing's stopping us from returning order to us, Fidelis. Just so, I shall require your expertise to keep the peace after the subjects have been returned to their confinement, however. You are Asphodelus' sole remaining warder, after all. Truth be told, I did not expect this investigation to become so involved. Of course, I would like to resolve matters here without resorting to outside help, but... Do you mean to send a report to La Habrea? Just too soon to say. Let us first find a way into Asbyssos. It would be best to withhold our judgment until we have ascertained the whereabouts of the other warders and the identity of the party responsible for their disappearance. Agreed. Even so, if it means saving even a single life within Pandemonium, then I'm not above asking La Habrea for help, should it come to that. Recent discoveries certainly paint Hesperus's actions in a new light. The number of unknown elements in this investigation grows, and we must proceed forward with the utmost caution. To that end, Eric and I shall remain here for the time being. Much as I enjoy your company, I do not believe we shall be needing protection so long as we remain in Asphodelus. You should take this time to rest. Surely you are weary, and there may be more battles ahead of us. Themis's burden may grow heavier in your absence, but he's shown that he's more than capable to bear it. Still, I would help wheresoever I am able. After all we've achieved so far has been thanks to you two, and I mean to repay the debt I owe. I don't know what use I can be outside of placating the creatures, but I'll find a way. Nonsense! You owe us nothing. It was thanks to your knowledge of the magics which govern this place that we were able to come this far. Elsewise, we would have likely succumbed to the Hippocampus' assault. Each of us has arrived at his dire pass by separate paths, but it is only by combining our respective expertise that we will reach the end of it and see Pandemonium saved. Thank you, Themis. Asperos' words seem to have affected me more than I realize. Together we've come this far, and together we'll reach the end. I have no doubt we will. Even so, let us allow Borelian her rest. Oh, don't worry, I don't need it. Besides, you have something awaiting a report on your progress, yes? I dare say your story will be much more than they ever imagined. Oh, right, okay, I was thinking there was going to be one more step to this. So yeah, we gotta go back to Labyrinthos and report back to the, uh, doctor guy. Claudian, that's his name. Ah, so you don't have served the Convocation. I suppose I needn't worry about you going behind our backs to curry favor with La Habrea. My friend would be very curious to hear what has occurred here. 
However, I fear that I, if I left Pandemonium, the wards protecting it would quickly deteriorate. I hope she does not mind, assuming some of my duties in the meantime. Okay, so I assume that's Azim. I mean, assume that he's talking about Vina. Either way, let's head on over to Euphoria and finish up this quest. Okay, let's fly on in here and talk to Claudian. Professor Claudian has tasked me with recording the ethereal signatures of each and every crystal in his recent orders. As a lowly assistant, I'm honored to be given such an enormous and monumental assignment. That's... not glamorous at all. At the professor's behest, we have kept our report in recent events as vague as we can manage. Even if we wish to do otherwise, not much of note has transpired here as of late. Welcome, Brillian. Back from the past, none worse for wear, I see. So, what did you find? We see there's this asylum thing and there's a bunch of crazy monsters and, uh... I don't think you guys are actually needed anymore, so bye. So, there is evil afoot in Pandemonium, an already ominous place. I must say, mythic beasts and missing warders. Truly, we are fortunate to see you returned to us in one piece. It appears the voice Brillian heard from the crystal spoke the truth. As for who left it behind and why, there are, those are yet questions to be answered. Indeed, it could be someone who lived among the ancients, or it could be someone trying to avert a tragedy from the future. What remains shrouded in mystery? Yet ilm by ilm we shall unveil the mystery, with the help of Brillian, of course. By her actions was the fabric of the past reshaped, yet she re returns to the same present she left. Which can only mean one thing, that her intervention in Pandemonium's crisis is but of the countless building blocks of history upon which our present has been built. There is no telling what consequences would rise if we stopped pursuing this matter now. Whatever plot is unravel unraveling within Pandemonium, we must not let it reach its conclusion. If one of those creatures should escape, what ripples would carry forth to the future? They might wreak havoc upon the world of the ancients, and their despair would leave an indelible mark upon history's pages. That despair would only feed the terrible beast that arose during the final days. The first final days already had a dramatic effect on the eons that followed. If the scars it left were made even deeper, then we risk losing our present entirely. Whatever the cost, our connection with the future of Elpis must be preserved. I know I have asked much of you already, but can I count on you to continue your work in Pandemonium? Sure, I mean, I want to fight more bosses. Your tireless efforts are much appreciated. If there is aught we can do to ease your burden, you need only say the word. Speaking of which, might you return the crystal into our keep? While we cannot accompany you to the past, perhaps something can be gained by researching it further. Okay, I mean, it's not like I need it. Ah, it shines just as splendidly as the day we met. We shall begin work right away. But I cannot promise any meaningful results for some time. And as matters in Elpis seem to be in a similar state, I must ask that you rest. But before that, allow me to make an introduction. As our research moves into it, its critical stage, I found it only suitable to re recruit another assistant. Who's it going to be? Oh, okay. 
Mylene is an expert in armaments. Ah, okay, this is the the Labyrinthos vendor for the gear. And I did the, uh, I've turned stuff into the one in Razad Han. Mylene is an expert in armaments from throughout history. Be they from the far-flung past or made in the most modern forges. Should you find aught of interest in your adventures, pick it here and she will be glad to offer her services. We know researchers in numerous fields that would love to get their hands on artifacts from bygone eras, and would give you goods in return that should aid in your trials in the trials ahead. Furthermore, if you ever wish to pursue the records of the events you have reported here, Nemgigi has been taking faithful and thorough notes. She is at your complete disposal. I sense that we have embarked upon something monumental, something that will dwarf all else I have accomplished in many years of research. I can think of no greater honor, nor reassurance, than to have your capable assistance in this endeavor. If there is anything to be found that will contribute to our success, to your success, we shall find it. We shall not rest until we have unlocked the mysteries of this crystal, and you will be the first to know when we do. Let's see, we're gonna get, uh, yeah, we get the crit materia, so I'll probably grab skill speed. Because I need to, I'm gonna end up putting some skill speed on my warrior. 